Now we will going to learn how you can add some colors to your document. So we will start with coloring the first web page, which is the title of this uh, document, which is the heading. There are a couple of ways that you can apply colors to the text. One of the ways, like the HTML old school way, is to use the font tag. So we're going to first try to do the HTML way. Then we're going to try to improve that. And we can use a color property, and we have some a well-known predefined color. So we are going to, uh, first of all, put all this text under the font, and we're going to give it, let's say, the color red. So now, as we start going into run, and we would like to run it in Firefox, here we go, and here's first web page in red color. Now I would like to go back and see, okay, now if I would like just to add a color that is asking me to introduce another tag, that's a lot of code, a lot of mess. So what we do is we rather incorporate CSS, cascading style sheet. I know I haven't formally introduced cascading style sheets to you. But I'll just briefly introduce it in here and probably in the incoming tutorials we're going to see it in detail. Cascading style sheets can be implemented in your HTML documents in three different ways. One of them is called inline. That means you write your cascading style sheet properties as part of a tag. So you write it inside a tag as a property. Just like we learn that image has a property called source, image has a property called width. So you write cascading style sheet pro um, properties as a property of an HTML, even though it's not an HTML property. So that's one way of writing the CSS. Another way of writing CSS is embedded. That is basically you write the definition of the CSS properties up in the head. Uh, which we're going to look at it later on. So we're not in the body, but in the head. The third um, way of using CSS, which is most commonly used, is external CSS, which is that you develop a separate file. You save it under .css extension, and then you link that with your HTML page, and HTML page brings, I mean, like takes all the properties from that file and it implements it all over. So we need to understand that CSS was introduced to enhance HTML, not to replace it. Because HTML had very customized tags, which could only do so much. So to start with, we're going to just get rid of font tag over here. And we will now going to write a property inside H1, because the text that we would like to apply um, is a H1 text. So we use a special property with HTML tags called style. Style, as soon as uh, the browser encounters this property, it right away, it, it's like, it just lets a light bulb basically to the browser that whatever you will now be seeing between the two double quotes is the value to style will be all CSS properties. So CSS has a property called color. Now in HTML, we use equals to sign to uh, differentiate between a property name and a property value. On the other hand, in CSS, especially in inline CSS, which we are talking about right now, we use colon. And you're going to see this in embedded and external, but I would only like to concentrate on inline for now. So we'll use colon as a separator between the property name and its value. And let's say the value is red. So now I'm going to save it. And I'm going to go to run and launch in Firefox. And here you go. Voila, we have red color. Now what we would like to do next is we would like to change this to blue so that you can see that. Well, through CSS, I change it from uh, red to blue. So now I'm going to save the changes. I'll go to run, launch in Firefox. And here you go. It's now in blue color. So now we will going to go back to Notepad++ and let's say if you would like to include more than one properties within a CSS style property. So in order to do that, you don't have to write style several times. Rather, all you need to do is you put a semicolon after the value of the first property. So now it is an indicator that you can now put the next property. So we'll use the, text, the, the property of text aligned. And since anyway, I'm centering the text here, so I'll just get rid of the center tag. 
And instead, I'll take care of everything through CSS. I'm taking care of the color through the CSS property color instead of the font tag, and then introducing its property color. And similarly, I will going to just say text aligns colon center. So now after applying these two, now notice as I go to run, launch in Firefox, you will notice as I refresh, or probably, you know, it's already been refreshed as I ran it, it did not make any difference. The output will be exactly the same. However, coding becomes a lot more simpler and contained. So that's one of the things that you can do with CSS, that you could introduce multiple properties in a tag, and you can give all of those properties to a tag. And there are so many tags that could take in the CSS properties. We'll explore them as we'll explore a little bit more on CSS. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for watching the tutorial. Have a good day.